Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and today is Casing Tuesday. And that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and give it a makeover. And while I wait for some of you to join me live, I just wanted to tell you, I know my live videos can sometimes be a little long. So if you're watching the replay, you're always welcome to skip to the middle where I'm actually making the card. Um, at the end, I always answer questions. So my videos do tend to look like they're long, but the actual card making part, I just go into the details of, of how to make the card. I think sometimes it's really nice to watch someone create a card from start to finish um, without skipping too many of the steps so that you can actually see kind of the bones of everything that goes into the card and um, you can see how it's constructed. I know personally I'm a visual learner and um, when I started out I had so so many questions and it was really nice to have someone that could answer those questions for me. So if you're here live with me, um, please ask your questions because I don't find questions annoying at all. I love to answer them because that's my mind is very inquisitive and uh, I, I want to answer people's questions if I can. And if not, sometimes I have to find out the answer another time and uh, figure it out. I'm just looking at myself right now. I'm, I'm wearing a vest again. I am so cold all the time. Every morning, uh, we don't have the heat on right now, but I live in Massachusetts and um, in the morning, our our house, it's a, our house was built in the 1950s and it's not very well insulated. So um, it gets cold in the morning. So until it warms up outside, because um, it's, um, oh, I, I work in Celsius, so I won't tell you what the temperature is in Celsius because most of you will be like, what, what's she talking about? Um, but it's, it's, it's cold. And um, so until, until it warms up, I'm like, dressing things up. I'm, I'm surprised I'm not wearing a hat and mittens uh, in the middle of summer, almost summer. But anyway, I'm so glad you're here with me this morning and I'm going to get started and let's talk about today's card. Uh, it's got a really interesting angle to it. So let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, here it is. And you can see um, there's kind of this lattice layer in the background here. It's on an angle. You can ignore that if you want and not put it into the card or you can add it into the card and um, I added it as a paper layer. There's actually a die that cuts that beautiful angle. I'm like, I've been um, looking at that, thinking, do I want to get that? It's kind of a neat way to add an artistic element to the back part of your card. So I'm thinking about it. Uh, but for now, I want to show you how you can use that or create that as a paper layer in case you don't have that die. Okay, so that is the card that uh, is the basis of our sketch today and it's on page 86 of the annual catalog if you have that. And then let's take a look at the sketch. So I've we've got the sketch drawn, the angle um, in the background here and you can see all of the other uh, layers and um, you can take those layers and turn them into your very own card. And we have a group for that um, on Facebook where you can share your cards and we also share our cards. There's a group of us that does this every week and then we invite you to share along with us. So I hope you will join us. It's a really good exercise whether you're a beginner or an experienced stamper, it is a fun exercise. Um, I used to participate in sketch challenges um, at Split Coast Stampers. That's where I first got my experience with sketch challenges. And I really, really loved doing the sketch challenges. It was so much fun. And so when we started copying cards, I knew that some people had trouble with those measurements. So a few years ago, we added in the sketches um, for the cards, and I think that really helps everyone. And use those as a starting point. You don't have to be exact, but it just kind of helps you get some base measurements. So um, let me pop over and share with you. Oh, I'm hoping my, my other 
Oh yes, here we go. I'm hoping my other camera was working. <laughs> it wasn't showing properly on my screen, but it is working. So here is my card. It's it's kind of got a lot of colors going on, which is not my maybe my usual uh, style. And I used a black uh, card base, which I never use, but I thought, let me get out of my tool comfort zone. I'm gonna show you how I created this background layer and colored the cheese. And isn't this a fun pun greeting? It might sound cheesy, but I think you're great. I love that. So you could turn this into whatever card you want. It could be a birthday card, uh, a thinking of you card. So this can be the outside greeting and then you can put something different on the inside to kind of make it more for whatever occasion it is. And this is the stamp set that I'm using. It's a little cheesy because <laughs> the puns are so funny. Look at where there's a wine, there's a way, your one tough cookie, and then thanks for putting up with me. I think that's so, those are so fun. I had to get them. So much fun. I'll do something, I wanna do something 3D with these later on. Um, so that's why I originally got this stamp set, but I thought today I would play with it in terms of a card. Okay, let's get started on the card. You're gonna need a card base and I'm using a basic black card base today. And this measures 11 inches by four and a quarter and I scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. And then I just use my bone folder. I already scored it. So that will be my card base. And then we need to create this angled layer here. And I just wanna show you how I did that, okay? so. Here is my other piece. So if we patch this together, okay, this is what we have to start off with. We have a three and three quarter inch by five inch piece of cardstock. And I made a mark three quarters of an inch in here on this side and three quarters of an inch down here on the bottom. And then I just connected those two points and then I cut along here. And that will allow you to cut two angled pieces so you'll have enough for two cards. And that way you don't have a weird angled piece left over that you might not really use. If you have, um, if you do it like this, then you'll have um, a chance to make it two cards. So you'll make two cards right away. And that's, that's what I did. That's why I haven't cut another piece. I thought right away I can just use this um, extra one and um, we can, um, I don't have to cut it again. So this paper is just plain black and white, but look at my paper right here. It's got color on it. So this paper is, let me pull it out right here. It is called Perfectly Penciled and it's a lot of black and white, beautiful designs. Actually, a lot of them are very floral in nature. Let me pull them out here. So we've got some beautiful florals and then they've got kind of a ge geometric background. So we've got the leaves and we've got florals. So you can color um, these, the florals as well, make some beautiful um, patterns, but it's a kind of a neat, uh, paper because it's a very flexible because you can add your own color to it. Okay, so I've got a scrap piece of um, paper here and I've got three different colors. I'm going to use Daffodil, Tahitian Tide, and Parakeet Party. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm using So Saffron, not Daffodil. I'm using the lighter color. Okay, so I've got my So Saffron ink pad here and I'm gonna use these sponge daubers and I always designate my daubers to be a specific color. Um, and I'm just gonna run yellow up in a stripe along my paper here. And I'm gonna go over a bit and run some yellow this way. And then I'm gonna come in and take I'm going to take some parakeet party and this time I'm going to go this way just 
just kind of spacing it out. You really can't go wrong here. I'm just adding color. And then Tahitian Tide. So now for the Tahitian Tide, I'm just looking kind of for the white spaces. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of blue in the spaces. Some of it's going to be covered up by my um, cheese. So I don't have to do like all the spots. So like in this area. Okay, so I've just got just added a little bit of color. So now it's not so plain. And then I'm going to add this to the front of my card. And you'll have about a quarter of an inch from the bottom, from the side, and from the top. I'll just bring my glue in. And add it. Um, oh, I just saw a question that I can answer right away. Normally I don't look over at my comments, but I just want to make sure all my sound is um, good. So um, I store my sponge daubers. Let me grab my case. Um, there is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator by the name of Tamara Davis who um, sold these nice little um, uh, boxes. This is a full-size stamping case that we used to sell, but she used to create this. I don't know if she still um, sells these. So after I get off um, today, I'm going to go look it up, and if I find that she's still selling them, I will leave you the link um, I'll edit the link to this video and um, or if you want to private message me um, I'll get you the link and see if she still has these so she created these little dividers for the sponge daubers and so this fits I think most of my sponge daubers and I have one for every color almost um, as I use a color um, in a sponge dauber I add a label to it and I put it in here so sometimes I don't always have all of them but I kind of do it as an on-demand basis and then I just do them from yellows I do them kind of in rainbow color order and uh, this is just a really nice way to, to store them um, but I will look up and see if Tamara is still doing that. I'm not sure if she is because I got mine a while back. Um, and I know, I think she's on the move. But maybe she is still doing it. I have just no clue at all. Okay, so we've got the first part of our card. Doesn't that look like really pretty with all the different colors in it? It's nice when we can color the paper like that. Now I've got a little piece of basic white cardstock and this measures two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I'm gonna come in here and I debated whether or not to do the cheese in so soft fron or to do it in a black background. And I opted to do um, my cheese just by stamping it in so saffron. So let's go ahead and do that. You could do either one. I'm debating whether or not to stamp it in black just to see what it would look like. Okay, I'm gonna do one in black. I've decided I'm gonna change up. I'm gonna change it up. Let's see which one I like better afterwards. So you could do the cheeses um, in so saffron like I did, or let's try the black and see which one we like better. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of create a little pattern here. My cheese. You want to have them fairly close together so you have the label okay because we're gonna have a label coming across here and let's keep this little scrap piece of paper out here for now and we'll bring back in the so saffron ink spot and we're gonna come in and we're going to use the sponge dauber to color isn't that fun I love coloring with sponge daubers, especially when I have like a big area. So what I do is I work my way from the outer edge and I push the color in. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines a little bit. That's kind of actually, it's it's kind of like, you know, with water coloring, you go outside the lines sometimes a little bit. So I'm just pushing the color away from the lines towards the center. 
And also the nice thing about that is it's going to create a little bit of variation in the color too. So it won't be, um, it will be dark and light and light and dark. It's, you're not going to have precision. Uh, sponge dauber is definitely not precision coloring, but it's kind of nice because it's not not a uniform color. I could have colored these with Stampin' Blends, but if I colored these with Stampin' Blends, it would have taken me a long time. But I will show you what I am going to do. I am going to bring in a Stampin' Blend marker, but I'm using it just, there we go. See? How fast was that to color? That is super fast coloring. I love it. Okay, and then I have my So Saffron Dark Marker. And all I'm going to do is come in and just, actually I'm going to use my bullet side. I'm just going to color in all the cheese holes. This is going to be much quicker than coloring the whole thing, right? But this is just going to darken up those holes that I couldn't do with a sponge dauber because there's no precision with sponge daubering, right? Because it's kind of, you can see even that I went outside the lines, but it doesn't really matter. It looks artistic. Okay, so just go ahead and hit all the little holes of the cheese. Do you guys like cheese? I love cheese. I think I love cheese a little bit too much. So I have a salad every day for lunch and I always put cheese on it. I think that's what I like the most about salads is the stuff that I put in the salads. <laughs> I do have vegetables in my salads too, not just cheese. I saw someone posted the other day uh, that their favorite salad uh, was a plate of bacon with a little kale leaf on top. And I'm like, no, that, that is definitely not my salad. It's mainly greens and vegetables, but I like to put some fun things on my salad too. Okay, so I've got this color. It doesn't look great. And it didn't take me very long at all. So let's create, um, we need to create two things. We need to create this banner here. And we need to create this little banner that comes down here. So this little piece of, what color is this? It's called Parakeet Party is three and a half by three quarters of an inch. We are going to take one of my favorite punches, which is the Banners Pick a Punch. It is wonderful. And we'll put it through the banner end in that three quarter inch slot. And we'll punch both ends. And then while I have this punch out, we're going to take this piece. Oh my gosh, I need to check how big this piece is. I wrote it on my blog. If you want to know the measurements for any of my layers that I use today, just check out my blog and let me just check. Um, this piece measures four and three eighths inches by one inch, just in case you're wondering. And I'm going to use this pointy banner end, put it down the one inch slot and punch it. Okay, so we're done with this punch. I love that I use um, one of each type of punch today and I just punched one end of this Tahitian Tide piece. So what I want to do is before I try and do funny crazy things to get this lined up, it's easier for me to line this up onto my white piece first. So I'm just gonna take this middle part, not going all the way to the end, and put some glue in the middle here. Leave the top and the bottom free. And I want my white piece to stick out about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch on either side. I want a tiny peak of the blue up at the top and a little bit more down here at the bottom, okay? And um, the original layer, this was centered, um, but I thought it looked better a little bit closer to this side. So I moved the center layer just a little bit over. And then we're going to take this and put a little bit of Tombow. And I'm going to just basically center this piece from side to side. And then I'll just kind of see where I like it for top to bottom. That looks good. 
Just make sure it's straight. Okay, now we're gonna take this little banner piece right here and we'll add the greeting, the little cheesy greeting. And I'll just center it on here. Okay. So on this original one, I didn't post pop this up on dimensionals, but let's pop it up on dimensionals. I've got a sheet here. This one, um, I've used almost all of the full size dimensionals. There's one left, they're little hexagons. But um, I'm going to just use a few of these extra pieces because they're sticky and why not use them up, right? Because they're on the edge. So sometimes I go ahead and just cut them up and use them. And then I'm going to add this to the center. I think that looks good. Okay. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask you which stamping you like better with the black or with the yellow? I don't know. I don't know at this point. Let's finish this off. Earlier, I tied a little bow with my um, uh, Tahitian tied I think it's called, it's, it's Tahitian Tide Ribbon. It's the metallic ribbon. And I'm going to take a mini glue dot. And just add that onto the center and pop that over here to the side. And then we've got, these are really neat. These are the 2022, 2024 in color dots. And look at their ombre. So they go kind of, they start at the original color and then they go lighter, 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 lighter. And there's two sizes. And we have all five of the new ink colors on here. So I'm just gonna take a couple of the blue and add them on here. Um, yeah, I'll just take one, I'll put a blue one up here. And then I'm going to take a green one and pop it over here okay because I have the parakeet and the Tahitian Tide in there and there we go I don't know I think I actually like this one better what do you think the one stamped with the the dark one with the black instead of the regular so saffron it just kind of depends on the look that you want to go for I think this one might pop a little bit better with the, with the cheese. Um, so like if I were going to color, I just wanted to show you. Let me grab a piece of basic white here. So if I had like, let's say I had the cookie, you could kind of do the same thing coloring wise with the cookie. Let me just pop this on here. And let's grab Memento ink. I want to show you how each of these can be colored with sponge daubers. So if I'm just popping a cookie on there, let's grab my sponge daubers. Let's see if I have a crumb cake, gray granite, smoky slate, Soft suede. Let's okay. Let's take soft suede. I probably have a crumb cake. This might be crumb cake out here. Whoa! I bet you this is crumb cake. I haven't labeled it yet. Sometimes I get really lazy, and I don't label things right away. And then I'm like, what color was that? <laughs> oh, so much fun. Okay, so I've got crumb cake here, and sponge dauber. Okay. Since I'm not gonna be using this, I just kind of sponge daubered off on here, but usually I would use a scrap piece of paper. And we can just use this and push the color. Obviously, this is gonna be a chocolate chip cookie. I like chocolate chip cookies too. In fact, I like most cookies. 
Okay. So you can see I kind of um, sponge daubered that. And then I think we're going to use, I'm looking at my, I'm going to grab bronze. I think that's dark enough. Um, we do have a whole bunch of different browns and tans now, but they're um, across the room. So let's see how that looks. This is the bronze and I'm adding the little color with the Stampin' Blends. So you can kind of see how it's kind of fun to color with um, with the sponge daubers and then just add the darker highlight with, um, um, with a Stampin' Blends, right? And I think you could do that with most of these. So the wine um, might be just a little bit harder. What I might do with the wine glass is I might do like a um, sponge dauber the wine and then come in with the Stampin' Blends um, to color the glass. But I would use a color like Light Pool Party. Okay, I'm here. We're, we're doing well for time. So I'm going to, I'm gonna show you what I would do. Let's do the wine glass just for the fun of it. Okay, so wine glass. I think we're, I'm gonna say we're red wine drinkers. So let's grab Mary Merlot. Do I have a Mary Merlot? Okay, I have Mary Merlot and I have Mary Merlot. Let's grab this. I'm sponging off again. I don't use Mary Merlot very much, so. Okay. So there's my Mary Merlot and the wine. And then for the wine glass, probably use like light pool party. You want a really light color. Pool party light is pretty light. So you just want to come in and just add like a little bit of accent to the wine glass. Maybe not go all the way. Now I'm wanting to go all the way, but let's keep one part that's white. So that is probably how I would color that. Um, you could go deeper, like if you wanted to, um, if you didn't like the sponge daubering on that one, if you wanted to make that deeper, I would try, first of all, light cherry cobbler. We don't have a Merlot in the, um, in the blends. So I would try, if you wanna do Light cherry cobbler. So that would make it look like a lot darker. We could come in with the dark cherry cobbler and kind of do the bottom here and the highlight. So that looks kind of nice. I think for the wine glass, it might be nicer to do the little, little bit darker. Um, and if that's a little too dark, of course, you could always start off with a lighter red, like um, maybe the light real red. Um, but I think the cherry cobbler does a fairly decent job. And of course, you need to ignore that because I'm using that to sponge off. And then the pudding. What would I do for the pudding? I'm pulling all of these out now just to color them. Stick this on a block. What pudding could be vanilla pudding, chocolate pudding, you know, different kinds of pudding. Um, that is whipping cream on the top. I don't know if I would do whipping cream on the top of my pudding, but I do kind of like having a blue bowl. Um, pudding. I think it would be kind of hard to get this part right here if I was doing like a vanilla pudding. So let's come in here and do like this is my so saffron dark. 
Let's come in with the So Saffron Light. And just kind of pull the dark out. Okay. And then let's do Pool Party. Here, we'll leave that little white stripe. And then we'll bring in Dark Pool Party. And let's do the bottom and just a little shading along the edge right there. A little shading right here. And let's, let's do the rim a little darker. Okay, and then of course the spoon. When one thinks of a spoon, I always kind of think about it being silver. So let's do like a metallic stainless steel. So then I just come in and do a spoon like that. And there we go. Got vanilla pudding. Maybe some of you would have wanted chocolate pudding, but I think vanilla pudding's um, great. It's very neutral. <laughs> so that's just some fun with coloring um, uh, some of the other images in the set. And I just love, love, love the greetings that go on this set that match everything up a little cheesy. So color with a combination of blends and sponge jarbering. You can uh, play around with it. I think the cheese and the cookie, um, because of their, they're really large, they lend themselves really well to like a combo of sponge daubering and um, blending, Stampin' Blends. And these ones, um, you might want to be more precise and just use um, Stampin' Blends. But of course, it's always your choice. All right, did we decide what we liked better in my original card? Did we decide if we liked the the black versus the, I don't know. I think I kind of like the black cheeses now that I, I look at them. I always waver when I'm going through and decide, you know, what, what do I like better? And then sometimes what I like better at first is not what I like better at the end. All right, I'm coming over to you guys. I'm back. So um, all the supplies I used today, they are down below in the description of the video, or you can pop over to my blog where there's a lot more information about stuff. Um, if you use my host code when ordering, you will get a free tutorial if you order at least $15. And if you order over $50, you're going to get my um, host code gift for the month. And yet again, I have not cut one up yet. It is a designer series paper sampler pack. It's a six by six and um, I, I need to cut one up and show you next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I'll have one so that I can show you, but it is a, a great little re reward. It's a six by six pack and it's uh, 48 sheets. So um, a nice little reward if you order over $50 with me this month. Oh shoot, this is the wrong code. How did that happen? I had my June code. This is my May 20. Let's let's go in and edit this right now. That is the wrong code. Let me grab the correct code. I could have sworn I changed that. You know, computers are are really funny things sometimes. Um, they you change something somewhere and then it is not okay hold on i'm getting you the right code i love it when i have to change things on a line um really quickly there we go ta-da the june code is now available i could have sworn i changed it there's so many moving pieces to online stuff you would not believe. I need like a little person that comes in my room, like a helper um, to help read off the comments to make sure I remember to change the host code. My gosh, too many things in my head. Um, I hope you can understand. <laughs> 
All right, I am gonna talk to you and see how you guys are all doing today. I hope we have a beautiful sunny day here. I hope you are having a sunny day too. Good morning, Teresa from Oregon. Hope you're having a good day. Good morning, Chris from North Carolina. And Betty's also from Oregon. Hi, Ellie from New York. I hope you're having a great day. Hello, Karen. Good morning, Amy. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling well. Good morning, Marsha and Dee from Missouri. And uh, Marsha, I answered your question about the sponge daubers right away. So I hope um, I need to get, I'm, I'm going to put my sponge dauber holder on my desk right now so I don't forget to look up and see if she still um, is has those available because it is really handy to keep them separate. Okay. Hi, Janine. Janine says she likes Havarti cheese. I love Havarti cheese too. In fact, I'm trying to think if that's what I have right now. There's, um, I um, do get my groceries a lot from Wegmans nowadays, and I think it is a Havarti that I put on my salad. I have, I have cheddar, I have Havarti, and I found this new um, a cheese. It's a combo um, it's called a cheddar parm cheese. It's a combination between cheddar and Parmesan, and it's really good. Um, so I like that one too. So I grew up with cheese from the time I was a little girl, and I, I love it maybe a little bit too much. But you don't have to put a lot on. Just cube up a little bit of cheese and put it on your salad at lunch. <laughs> now some of you are thinking, I'm not going to eat a salad for lunch, but salads are good. They are. Um, Marcia says you can never have enough cheese. You're right. You're right. And and for dinner I had, I had pasta with kind of I had a pasta primavera for dinner last night. So it did have cheese in it too. It had parmesan in it. It was really good. Um, good morning, Janie from Nebraska. I hope I'm pronouncing your your name right. I'm I'm hoping it could be Jane or it could be Janie. I don't know. So um, everyone has different ways of pronouncing their names, so you just never know. Let me know. Um, and Janie likes the black, and so does Marsha. Um, okay, and Dee also likes the one with black. Okay, good. Betty likes both. And Teresa says the black really pops. Um, so maybe I should have photographed, done the black one. But, uh, you know, that's the good thing about, like, stamping and experimenting. Um, you know, you, you get to choose and you, you, sometimes you make the, the choice that isn't the popular choice, but I think you learn from it. I, I hope I never, ever stop learning and stamping because, um, art and, and anything in life, you always want to keep learning because once you've learned everything, it would be boring and it's not possible to know everything, right? So yeah, I keep learning. I keep playing. I've been stamping now, not quite 20 years, but it's getting up there. And so, you know, it's good to keep learning. Okay. Janine also likes the black one. Um, Dee says, sponge darbering, the cookie makes it look so real. Cookies are sort of shaded and lumpy, and that does the trick. Yeah, I think it's easier to get um, with the cheese, too. Like, I think it's nice to have a little bit of variation. So I like the sponge drawbering. It's just it's not very precise. So you have to kind of live with the, the imprecision of it all. Um, Marsha like my coloring tips. Um, and, yeah, sponge drawbers for larger areas. And... You know, kind of that's what you want because if I had colored, like it would have taken a long time to color all those cheeses as a background, right? But since it's a big area of one color, I can use a sponge dauber and do it really quickly and just hit the highlights with the Stampin' Blends and using a combo of the two, it just makes it a lot easier just to, you know, cover a large area and that kind of makes it more practical to use a stamp as a background because if you have to color a lot of them um, you might not want to create a background with them because it's going to take too long to color them so all right and Karen likes the way the black pops better 
Karen says she wished she lived closer and she'd come help me. Aw, that's so sweet. I know. And and right now I'm kind of living like a hermit. So that kind of sucks. Um, so um, I, I, I think... I think I just need a little longer. I think maybe by the end of the year. That's that's my way my brain works. I like routine. And so I just need a little longer to feel more comfortable getting out in the world. I know things are a little safer now. The virus isn't as strong, but I just kind of still feel kind of feel reluctant. I know there's others out there like me um, who kind of feel that way and um, it's, it's hard to make that transition from being super cautious to kind of like relaxing a little bit. So I will get there. It just will take me a little longer. <laughs> well, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope the sun is shining where you are and I will be on, on Friday. I am making more Hershey's nugget boxes and I don't know if you've been following my Hershey's Nugget Boxes Saga. I don't even know where I put them. Oh, here they are. So my Nugget Boxes, I've been making them in different sizes. And last week we tackled single line boxes and we did them. This is the piece box I made online. And we made them in sizes uh, from two letters all the way up to nine letters long. Now this week I'm doing double line. So think about like this so that these would all be in one box so that's what I'm going to be doing on Friday so if you want to watch me on Friday live um, join me on YouTube at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and I will be making I'll be making a sample box of the double line boxes and then I'll be sharing all of the measurements for all the boxes I think I'm going to do the smallest one I think is going to be a three by two line um, so six letters total and then I'm going to go all the way up to a nine by two line so we could have 18 letters total. It's fun to be able to spell out different things. Maybe you want to put a special greeting on something. I'll have some sample ones so that you can kind of see, get some ideas. But there's probably ideas that you have too, that things that you want to spell out. So um, that's what I'll be doing on Friday this week. We'll be doing the double line Hershey's Nugget boxes. So please feel free to join me live or you can watch the replay afterwards. Um, it's always posted um, midday. And then on Saturday, I uh, will have a project sheet for that project. All right, guys, have a great week. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.